So yeah, finally caught a break in the snow. It was about minus 20 Celsius last week, which is pretty crazy. Um, and now again, now it's like five or six Celsius. We're at an abandoned quarry here. So we have plenty of terrain, a mixture of you know, uh, running some mountain bike trails with a truck. And also obviously rock piles for just miles and miles. So yeah, perfect conditions. Obviously, you know, give those uh, axles a good run. Uh, and yeah, just overall pretty nice day for running. And again, for those who haven't seen the first video, um, I'd recommend you see it. Just uh, to, basically, I'm testing out these new um, uh, aluminium axles off AliExpress, or, or you can also get them off Amazon. And uh, just putting them to like a torture test um, on this one iron wraith here. Uh, and um, again, I'm running a Puller Pro 3500 V1 with a Mamba X on 3S LiPo, so definitely no slouch. Uh, and uh, gonna definitely put some torque down and beat on these axles so we'll see how it goes So the day has finally come that these axles are ready for their tear down and uh, we'll have a look inside. So, so far for the past three weeks I have ran about uh, six of these um, 5200 3S LiPos through them. Um, each of these LiPos around an hour and a half to an hour and 45 minutes. So all in all at least uh, nine hours of uh, total run time. So far the axles feel fine. Um, they sort of settled in um, since that initial run. Um, I don't feel like the axles have uh, gotten any more play or really uh, any noisier. One problem I did have was these shoulder screws. Um, I did use some blue Loctite on it, uh, but some of them did start to back out. Uh, fortunately, I didn't lose any. But other than that, the axles seem fine. Uh, you can see they're obviously well used. I will splice in some of the um, running footage um, as I talk. Uh, but, you know, from the stuff I've seen, it's doing pretty good. I won't um, say that this is the end all be all durability test, but I think I've given it a fair shake and um, these axles has held up. So let's go ahead and tear them down. 
got a honey dandy of these uh, plastic containers and a tuna can and some fresh MIP drivers. Here are the two axles torn down. We have some nice scratches on there. Uh, but other than that, the uh, axle, um, you can clearly see this is not paint. Um, this is in fact anodized. Uh, it's keeping it shine. And again, the material uh, hardness is good. There are no like big gouges. These are mostly just scratches. Here we have the diff covers torn off. The uh, lithium grease here is still uh, relatively white, which means there's uh, not a lot of debris, especially uh, metal shavings from your gears um, in it. So that's always good. It's running smooth. Front here, uh, it's looking a little bit more dirty, um, and that's uh, mainly because I think uh, mud and a bit of water managed to get in there. So yeah, similar to the rear, uh, the front looks pretty good, um, at least uh, right now. We're gonna um, clean them up, obviously, and look at the wear. And in terms of that front axle, this bearing, again, it hasn't failed yet, actually, surprisingly. Uh, but again, it's a bit dodgy. And before I start, I want to reiterate that um, the durability testing and the footage you saw is only a snippet of uh, the total around nine hours of total drive time I have with the truck. And I'm not uh, trying to say that that's what the end all and be all of durability tests, but I think it is a pretty typical use case of a truck. Um, you know, it should be able to take some fall, some hits, some rolls. I think it's fair to say that the, the Holmes Polo Pro V1 3500KV on 3S LiPo is a pretty uh, potent system uh, and most people will probably be running um, similar or a lower uh, performance system and so that being said let's have a closer look at the actual gears themselves in detail. So here it is all torn down um, and I'm happy to report that everything looks pretty good. So I'll start off with the axle shafts themselves. So front and rear axle shafts, they pretty much look uh, brand new. Uh, the steel on this, actually really good quality. Um, you can see um, the wear on the, um, where it connects the locker, pretty much um, as good as new. The front obviously has a bit more stress uh, since this vehicle is overdriven. Uh, but in terms of play, um, there's basically, uh, this side to side, obviously, this is just uh, sort of the design of it as a bit of slop. But in terms of um, the pins, it feels really good. It feels almost as good as new. So I'm actually very impressed with these. Uh, and I want to say that these also fit um, stock axle housings. I've thrown them into a plastic axle housing. So these definitely work. So let's have a closer look at the teeth. This is the rear ring and pinion. And unfortunately, when I did disassemble this, um, this was the one I didn't reassemble in my initial review, so the bolts actually came loose um, during uh, the nine hours of runtime, and so it messed with the mesh, causing the pinion gear here to collide with the locker, uh, creating these uh, marks. And also because of the mesh was slightly off, there is significant wear to the teeth on both the gears, especially on the ring gear here. Um, it does feel quite sharp. So again, steel quality, not really that good. Um, I will say, however, it is better than the gears that come in, uh, the those fully assembled capper axles you can get uh, off AliExpress or Amazon. Uh, at least the steel quality is better. Not that it's good steel, but it's still better, and so is the locker quality. You can also see that there's um, some uh, deformation of the of the locker here. Again, steel quality is a bit soft, and that is caused by um, the rear axle shaft you see this taper so uh, when you take side impacts it sort of rams um, the axle shaft into the locker causing this bit for the most part um, these held up fine uh, on brushless definitely not on par with the with machine gears from ssd vanquish or axial themselves these are probably similar in terms of durability to the stock sintered gears. Moving to the front axle here, um, it is looking a little bit better uh, since it was able to keep the mesh. Um, the wear isn't as extreme, but there is still um, noticeable amount of wear and you can feel that it's kind of sharp again. Steel is a bit soft. But other than that, the locker actually felt held up better here. In terms of play, there is more play than brand new, but not super concerning. Um, 
yeah, otherwise um, the front looks fine. So I think the verdict for the drivetrain components so far, they're actually quite serviceable. I'm very impressed with the axle shafts, but these lockers and gears, they're passable. If you're running a brush setup, I think these gears will hold on for a fair amount of time. In terms of axle shafts, I'm going to say that they are pretty much on par with the other axle shafts that I've had, um, SSD and Vanquish. These seem to be uh, good quality. In terms of the other parts, uh, here is the rear axle. You know, everything looks fine. Um, I didn't really expect this to fail. So there are obviously some dents here, but again, um, I will say that this is not pot metal. Um, this aluminium's um, noticeably stronger than, again, those cast Capra ones. I do believe they are machined. I don't know if they're billet machined, or they could be cast and then machined back, but um, regardless if these are cast or they're machined, I think what's more important to me is that things fit. Um, and I'm happy to report that these axles, the precision for the bearings are good. Um, they are tight enough where it doesn't wobble, but loose enough that bearings don't get stuck. So with the weakness of the stock ring and pinion gears in mind, um, I'm happy to report that um, stock gears, or here I have actually SSD gears. Um, these are 27.8, the overdrive version of the SSD gears. They are a direct drop-in upgrade, um, and I have not encountered any compatibility issues, as you can see. And so I think that's great for peace of mind. Uh, when these uh, stock gears inevitably go bad, you can put some actually quality components in and keep the metal housings. In terms of the other parts, um, here are the knuckles. Um, there are no significant wear. The covers look good. Um, so yeah, pretty much the only weak spot are the gears. You know, it's kind of a big part, but again, uh, for around 190, uh, you can find this. This is actually not bad. Uh, and to address some of the other comments uh, that I had in my first video, the plastic axle is going to be stronger and more reliable than these, which to an extent is true. Um, you know, these gears, these stock gears definitely um, are lacking. But I think for me, the priority really wasn't a durability. Uh, the stock axle housings, I've running, been running them on brushes forever. They hold up fine. Um, for me, this is really just a cosmetic upgrade, uh, to be honest. Building onto that, um, there were also a few comments um, that were very strongly worded and was sort of saying, oh, how dare you compare these to Vanquish? Uh, first of all, if I am even willing to spend six, $700 on a pair of axles, I don't think I would enjoy the driving experience because I'd be sort of very careful and try not to damage them, scratch them up too much. Um, and so these cheap axles are actually great. I, I feel very comfortable um, bashing them. Also, um, one thing with these axles is even if you had the money and you were willing to spend on a pair of real SC Extend 2 Vanquish Rock Jocks, good luck trying to find one. They are discontinued. Um, and they're pretty much impossible to find um, unless you go on Facebook groups or maybe sometimes on eBay. Um, and again, they would be going for, even used, they'll be going for six, seven hundred dollars. Uh, the styling is slightly different. They do look very rock chalk like, but they're not exactly the same. So I don't think it is trying to pass himself off as Vanquish. And I view this more of as a alternative. On that note, uh, I want to say again, even with the uh, sort of subpar uh, metal gears that it comes with, these I think is a steal. I would be totally open to the idea of just the manufacturer, if they could, they would just sell the housings. And again, uh, I'm by no means claiming that these are a durability upgrade to stock plastic axles. They might be, they might not, but uh, as a cosmetic upgrade, I think these axles look really cool. Here we are with the axles all re-greased and reassembled. Again, obviously those ring and pin gears are a bit of a weak spot. Steel is, is still a bit too soft, but they're holding on. So I just left them back in and I'm going to basically run these gears uh, until they fail. But other than that, these axles uh, still look great. Uh, they're functioning smoothly uh, and honestly, nothing really um, to complain. I would still definitely recommend these, uh, especially at the price. I think more surprisingly, um, throughout this is that stock parts actually are a direct drop and upgrade with the exception of that weird bearing but everything else 
is basically stock bearing size are the same um ring and pinion uh locker axle shafts they're all interchangeable with stock which i think is very important especially uh if you want a vehicle that will last you'll want to swap parts in and renew parts that's it for me today um i really enjoyed this investigation actually the testing was fun getting to test out maybe less well-known products and you know especially when you end up finding a gem like this it's quite rewarding I hope that this video uh, helped you make a decision on your purchase. That's it for me today. Uh, have a good one and I'll catch you on the next video.